Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture series on uh, integral equation under NPTEL courses. This is the fourth lecture in this series. You can recall in the last lecture that is in the lecture 3, we have considered the formulation of Volterra integral equations of second kind starting from second and higher order linear ordinary differential equations subjected to initial conditions. And you can recall that we have discussed about a method such that a second order differential equation with specified initial conditions for y and y dot at the initial point x equal to a, we have converted the equations of the form d 2 y d x 2 plus p x into d y d x plus q x into y equal to r x into a integral equation. And then for higher order ordinary differential equation, we have dealt with the method of assuming nth derivative of y with respect to x as u and then we converted the given ordinary differential equation into an integral equation of Volterra type where unknown function was u. And then with illustrative example, we have uh, attempted to understand the difference between solutions of two types of integral equations either obtained directly from the differential equation by integrating it twice or solution of the integral equation obtained by assuming second derivative equal to u and the problem considered was a second order ordinary differential equation and we have discussed about the solution. Now, today in this lecture, we are going to discuss about solution method for uh, Volterra integral equation of second type. So, the equations we are going to consider Volterra integral equation of the second kind and of course, this equation we are going to consider is non-homogeneous. So, the basic structure is given by y x is equal to f x plus lambda integral a to x k of x comma s y s d s where a less than equal to x comma s less than equal to b. This is the given integral equation and the method by which we are going to solve this kind of equation is known as method of successive approximation. method of successive approximation. Now, immediately one question uh, come up that uh, what will be the condition satisfied by f and uh, k x comma s such that we can apply this method or by using this method we can solve the given Volterra integral equation. Answer to this question is that f x is continuous f x is continuous on the closed interval a comma b and the kernel k x comma s and its first partial derivative with respect to x both of them are 
continuous over the rectangular domain a comma b cross a comma b. Now, actually we are considering that k x comma s and partial derivative of k with respect to x are continuous over the rectangle of uh, length of the both sides b minus a actually square b minus a, but practically we need the continuity condition of k x comma s and partial derivative of k with respect to x over a triangle, because if we try to understand this is our a square over which the given functions k x s and partial derivative of k x s are continuous. So, integral is over s from a to x, integral over x is from a to x. Now, the point is that if we consider this rectangle, so this is the point A. So, we are talking about somewhere at x and x can go up to this point that is x equal to b, this is the point x equal to b. So, integral this is the line s equal to x. So, ultimately we need the condition over this particular in region, this is the region. Now, what is the method of solution that is uh, we are going to talk about successive approximation. It says first of all we can take a 0th order approximation denoted by y 0 x for the given particular problem. And once we substitute this 0th order approximation into the given integral equation onto the right hand side, that means when we are substituting it into the format f x plus integral a 2 x k of x comma s y 0 s d s, evaluating this integral and then adding with f x we can calculate y 1 x. Now, first question is what will be the assumption for y 0 x? First of all, we start our discussion with the assumption that y 0 x is equal to f x. Of course, you can keep in mind that instead of f x any continuous function like f x equal to 0 or f x equal to 1 or f x equal to x they can serve the purpose. Now, our target is using 0th order approximation for y which is denoted by here as y 0 x we can calculate y 1 x because k x comma s is known this is a continuous function. We have assumed y 0 x equal to f x which is again a continuous function. So, therefore, integral a to x k x comma s y 0 s d s this part is integrable and after integration f x plus this integral produces another continuous function which is defined over the interval a comma b where x ranging from a to b. And using this first approximation y 1 similarly we can calculate y 2 x this is equal to using the result f x plus a 2 x k of x comma s y 1 s d s. So, that means, we are using a recursive formula that is y k x is equal to f x plus integral a 2 x k x comma s y it would be better to write r instead of k here otherwise it will be little bit confusing with the kernel r x and this r is greater than equal to 1 and our target is 
to show that these y r x as r tends to infinity convert if converges to a uniformly continuous function then that particular function will be the solution of the given integral equation. So, that means if limit n tends to infinity y n x exist and if this sequence of function converges to a function say y x then solution to the given integral equation i e stands for integral equation here is y x is equal to capital y x. So, we can repeat it again as a 0th order approximation we can assume y 0 x equal to f x using y 0 x we can calculate y 1 x using the expression for y 1 x we can calculate y 2 x and so on and general recursive formula is y r x is equal to f x plus integral a 2 x k x comma s y r minus 1 s d s where r greater than equal to 1 and if this limit function as limit n tends to infinity y n x converges to y x then y x is the solution to the given integral equation. So, first of all we consider few examples to understand this technique. We consider the integral equation y x this is equal to x minus integral 0 to x x minus s y s d s. So, clearly this is an integral equation of the Voltaire integral equation of the second kind and uh, we have to solve this equation by using the method of successive approximation. So, here f x is equal to x. So, therefore, as per method just we have discussed y 0 x is equal to x. According to the formula y 1 x is equal to x minus integral 0 to x x minus s y 0 s d s and this is equal to x minus integral 0 to x x minus s s d s and this is equal to x minus x into x square by 2 plus x cube divided by 3 and from here we can calculate this is equal to x minus x cube by 6 and in order to make a correspondence between 3 and 6 just for trial we can write it here x minus x cube by factorial 3. In the next step we will be able to verify whether our this assumption that denominator of x cube will be factorial 3 or not that can be easily verified. Once we calculate y 2 x so, y 2 x is equal to according to the formula x minus integral 0 to x x minus s y 1 s d s and this is equal to x minus integral 0 to x x minus s multiplied with s minus s cube by factorial 3 d s. So, this is equal to x minus. So, first of all this part we have to integrate with respect to s and then we have to substitute the lower limits and upper limits. In both the integrals lower limit will contribute only 0 
So, from the first term that is x into integral of this will give us x into x square by 2 minus x to the power 4 divided by factorial 4 here. Then this minus combined with this minus give us plus and here integrand is a square and s to the power 4 by 3. So, we will be having x cube divided by 3 minus x to the power 5 divided by 5 into factorial 3. Now, here you can check the calculation and just for your understanding I am writing all these terms in a systematic way. This is x cube by 2 we can write x cube 3 x cube by factorial 3 then plus here we can write 5 x to the power 5 by factorial 5 with the anticipation denominator will be comes out to be factorial 5 plus 2 x cube by factorial 3 and minus 4 x to the power 5 divided by factorial 5. Now, if you combine these two terms that is this with this one and then fifth order terms this with this one you will be getting this is equal to x minus x cube by factorial 3 plus x to the power 5 by factorial 5. Now, of course, there is no need that you have to be guess that this will be factorial 3, this will be factorial 5. I am doing this only for the reason you can say for this problem I already know the solution will comes out to be a closed form. In other words, this type of manipulation is possible if and only if solution is coming out to be a closed form. In case the solution cannot be expressed into a closed form, then this type of manipulation will not work. But again writing this factorial 3 does not make any harm here, because if it is not true something else may be come out. So, that can be understood from this second iteration for y 2 x. So, now look at the expression y 0 x equal to x y 1 x equal to x minus x cube by factorial 3 y 2 x is x minus x cube by factorial 3 plus x to the power 5 by factorial 5. So, now we can write the general term for this iteration that is y n x that is equal to sigma r running from 0 to n minus 1 whole to the power r times x to the power 2 r plus 1 divided by factorial 2 r plus 1. You can easily verify that whenever r equal to 0 only. So, that means, we are considering n equal to 0. Substituting here you can find this is equal to x and similarly you will be having all other expressions that can be easily verified. And finally, this limit n tends to infinity y n x this is equal to sin x, because here y n x is the uh, Maclaurin series of sin x up to n terms and therefore, this series converges uniformly to the function sin x and hence this y n x converges to sin x and the solution to the given problem y x is y x equal to sin x. This is a solution to the given integral equation. Next we consider one more example. Example 2, it is given by y x equal to 1 plus x plus integral 0 to x x minus s y s d s. 
this is the given integral equation. Here again y 0 x is equal to 1 plus x, because here 1 plus x this particular expression is our f x. So, y 0 x equal to 1 plus x that is actually f x. Now, using y 0 x we can calculate y 1 x equal to 1 plus x plus integral 0 to x x minus s multiplied by 1 plus s d s and this is equal to 1 plus x plus x into x plus x square by 2 minus x square by 2 plus x cube by 3. And here after simplification it is coming out to be 1 plus x plus x square by 2 plus x cube divided by factorial 3. This is coming out to be 6 and hence we can assume that this is going to be factorial 2. Again in a previous manner if we continue to calculate y 2 x. So, y 2 x equal to 1 plus x integral 0 to x x minus s multiplied by 1 plus s plus s square by factorial 2 plus s cube by factorial 3 d s. If you evaluate it then you will be having 1 plus x plus x square by factorial 2 plus x cube divided by factorial 3 plus x to the power 4 by factorial 4 plus x to the power 5 divided by factorial 5. This will be the y 2 x. So, in this way from here we can write y n x is equal to sigma r running from 0 to n minus 1 whole to the power r x to the power 2 r plus 1 divided by factorial 2 r plus 1. And once n tends to infinity limit n tends to infinity this y n x will be equal to e to the power x and hence y x this is equal to e to the power x is the solution to the given problem. And here we like to verify that what will be the effect if we choose some other functions as y 0 x. So, we are going to solve the same problem by assuming y 0 x equal to 1. So, if we assume this is y 0 x equal to 1, so then y 1 x will be equal to 1 plus x plus integral 0 to 1 x minus s d s. This will be only the expression and here we can find that 1 plus x plus x square minus x square by 2. So, this is coming out to be 1 plus x plus x square by 2 and then y 2 x this is equal to 1 plus x plus integral 0 to 1 x minus s multiplied with 1 plus s plus s square by 2 d s and evaluating we can find this will be equal to 1 plus x plus 
x square by 2 plus x cube by 6 plus x to the power 4 divided by 24. So, that is actually equal to 1 plus x plus x square by factorial 2 plus x cube by factorial 3 plus x to the power 4 by factorial 4. So, ultimately y n x this is equal to sigma r runnings from 0 to n minus 1 whole to the power r x to the power 2 r plus 1 divided by factorial 2 r plus 1. And again in this case limit n tends to infinity y n x this converges to e to the power x. So, that means we are having the same solution whatever we have obtained using the initial guess that is 0th order approximation y 0 x equal to 1 plus x in case of 0th order approximation y 0 x equal to 1 we are having the same solution. So, from here you can understand clearly that there is no harm for considering some other function as 0th order approximation only point you have to keep in mind that assumed function should be continuous. Now, of course, according to this kind of scheme uh, the kernels are continuous and assuming y 0 x equal to f x is a most convenient one because it immediately satisfies the uh, continuity condition and of course, you will be having the solution as in the desired form. Now, we are going to see what is the proof behind the method that whether always irrespective of the structure of the function that means just assuming f x and k x comma s both are continuous whether will it be possible to prove that this type of approximation always converges uniformly to a continuous function or not. Now, for this purpose we start in this way we are assuming f x and k x comma x as both of them are continuous over the domain a comma b and a comma b cross a comma b. So, therefore, they are bounded both of these functions are bounded because a b are finite these are closed interval this is a closed square and we assume these bounds as l 1 and l 2 respectively. That means, f x this is less than equal to l 1 and k of x comma s this is less than equal to l 2 using the continuity condition we can found these are the bounds. Now, our target is to prove that iterates uniformly converges to a continuous function. So, for this purpose first of all we can calculate this difference modulus y 1 x minus y 0 x this modulus. Now, this is equal to modulus of integral a 2 x k x comma s y 0 s d s. This is coming in this way if you assume y 0 x is equal to f x. So, from the result y 1 x equal to f x plus integral a 2 x k of x comma s y 0 s d s we can write this is equal to y 0 x plus integral a 2 x k of x comma s y s d s. So, clearly this y 1 x minus y 0 x is equal to integral a 2 x k x comma s y s d s. So, that means modulus of 
y 1 x minus y 0 x is equal to this one. Now, using the well known inequality you can write this is less than equal to a 2 x modulus of k x comma s multiplied by modulus of y 0 s d s. Now, this y 0 s is again our f s. So, this is always less than equal to l 1 k x comma s is less than equal to l 2. So, this is less than equal to l 1 multiplied by l 2 integral a 2 x d s. So, this is equal to l 1 l 2 x minus a this is call it 1. Then we calculate the difference between y 1 x and y 2 x. Now, y 1 x this is equal to f x plus integral a 2 x k x comma s y 0 s d s y 2 x this is equal to f x plus integral a 2 x k of x comma s y 1 s d s. So, subtracting we can find y 2 x minus y 1 x this is equal to integral a 2 x k of x comma s y 1 s minus y 0 s this d s. So, if you take the modulus on both side. So, modulus of y 2 x minus y 1 x this is equal to modulus of integral a 2 x this one. Now, this modulus is less than equal to integral a 2 x modulus k x comma s this modulus multiplied by modulus y 1 s minus y 0 s d s. Now, be careful here we have modulus y 1 s minus y 0 s. Now, this s is ranging between a to x and therefore, we can use this result that is modulus y 1 x minus y 0 x is equal to this one. So, when we replace x by s, so in this position we will be having s. So, first of all we can apply this is less than equal to uh, L 2 and this part is less than equal to L 1 multiplied by L 2 integral a 2 x s minus a d s. Now, here we can write this s minus a without modular sign because s is greater than a and therefore, after evaluating we can find this is equal to l 1 times l 2 square times x minus a whole square divided by 2. Now, in the next step you have to proceed uh, follow the same procedure. So, in the next step if we just write so then modulus of y 3 x minus y 2 x this will be less than equal to a 2 x after taking modulus inside we will be having k x comma s then modulus y 2 s minus y 1 s d s. So, this is less than equal to l 1 times l 2 cube because 1 l 2 comes from here l 2 square coming from here. So, we will be having l 2 cube divided by 2 then integral a 2 x s minus a whole square d s and this is equal to l 1 l 2 cube x minus a whole cube divided by factorial 3. So, proceeding in this way as an induction hypothesis we can assume 
that y r x minus y r minus 1 x this is less than equal to l 1 times l 2 to the power r x minus a whole to the power r divided by factorial r. And from here we can prove easily y r plus 1 x minus y r x this is less than equal to if we combine this concept. So, it will be l 1 multiplied with l 1 l 2 to the power r divided by factorial r integral a 2 x s minus a whole to the power r d s and this is equal to l 1 l 2 to the power r plus 1 divided by factorial r plus 1 x minus a whole to the power r plus 1. So, that means this induction hypothesis we have assumed for r we proved it for r plus 1. So, that means this result is valid for all positive integral n. Now, we have to keep in mind that this condition is satisfied that is x always lying between a and b. So, once this x is less than equal to b, so ultimately we can write for n that is y n x minus y n minus 1 x we have proved this will be less than equal to l 1 l 2 to the power n divided by factorial n multiplied by x minus a whole to the power n. Now, as x less than equal to b, so this expression will be less than equal to l 1 times l 2 to the power n b minus a to the power n by factorial n and we denote this by m n and therefore, we can write sigma n equal to 1 to infinity m n this is equal to l 1 times summation n running from 1 to infinity l 2 to the power n b minus a whole to the power n divided by factorial n and this is equal to l 1 times e to the power l 2 times b minus a minus 1. And hence the conditions for y stresses m test these are satisfied and therefore, the series summation n runnings from 1 to infinity y n minus y n minus 1 x this converges uniformly. This converges uniformly on the interval a comma b that means x belongs to this interval. Now, if we go back to the previous slides then we can see that y 1 x is calculated from this result that is f x plus this one. Now, f x is continuous as f x is continuous. So, after integration we can find y 1 x is continuous. Once y 1 x is continuous from the definition of y 2 x once we will be calculating y 2 x then y 2 x is equal to this one f x is continuous k x comma s this is also continuous y 1 s is continuous. So, y 2 x is continuous. So, that means y 0, y 1, y 2 these are continuous and in this way the nth iteration y n x is also continuous and therefore, the sequence of functions they are continuous functions and ultimately we are able to prove that n tends to n running from 1 to infinity y n x minus y n minus 1 x they converges uniformly over the interval a comma b. Now, for our notational convenience if we define psi n x is equal to y n x minus y n minus 1 x then 
this series is convergent n running from 1 to infinity psi n x and let us assume this converges to psi x. Now, if we look at this particular series that summation n running from 1 to infinity psi n x this is equal to summation n running from 1 to infinity y n x minus y n minus 1 x this is equal to nothing but limit n tends to infinity y n x minus y 0 x because in the summation we will be having y 1 minus y 0 plus y 2 minus y 1 plus y 3 minus y 2 and so on. So, that means y 1, y 2, y 3 all will cancels with each other we are only left with y 0 x and the last term that is y n x as n tends to infinity. Now, as n tends to infinity summation psi n x is convergent this converges to psi x and therefore, limit n tends to infinity y n x this converges to psi x plus y 0 x as per our previous notation we have defined is as y x. So, this is the proof of the result that these approximates iterates are actually converging to a uniformly continuous functions because each iterates is continuous and the um, series summation n running from 1 to infinity psi n x minus psi n minus 1 x this is uniformly convergent over the interval a comma b and denoting the sum function psi n x and the sum function psi n x equal to psi x we have established that limit n tends to infinity y n x they converges to this one. Now, I just write here some problems for your practice that is problem number 1 uh, y x is equal to 1 minus 9 integral 0 to x x minus s y s d s. This is the first problem number 2 y x equal to 1 plus x minus integral 0 to x x minus s y s d s number 3 y x equal to 2 minus x plus integral 0 to x y s d s number 4 y x equal to 1 plus integral 0 to x x minus s y s d s and problem number 5 y x is equal to 1 plus x minus integral 0 to x y s d s. Now, before coming to the end of this lecture I like to draw your attention towards the last problem. This problem is very much interesting. In the proof you have seen that it is very easy to use the continuity of f x to prove the result of uniform convergence of the iterates. Sometimes other assumption gives us easily the desired solution apart from the assumption y 0 x equal to f x and last one is a such type of example. If we just try to solve this problem y x is equal to 1 plus x minus integral 0 to x y s d s with the assumption y 0 x this is equal to 1. You can see that y 1 x is coming out to be 1 plus x minus integral 0 to x 
1 d s. So, that means 1 plus x minus x is equal to 1. So, similarly y 2 x is equal to 1 plus x minus 0 to x y 1 s d s. So, this is exactly equal to 1. So, clearly you can see in this way y n x this is equal to 1 and hence limit n tends to infinity y n x this is equal to 1. Now, if you just solve this problem with the assumption y 0 x equal to f x that means 1 plus x then at every step you will be having some additional term that is y 1 x this is equal to 1 plus x minus integral 0 to x 1 plus s d s because this 1 plus s is your y 0 s and after integration it will give you 1 plus x minus x minus x square by 2. So, this is equal to 1 minus x square by 2. Similarly, y 2 x this will be 1 plus x minus integral 0 to x 1 minus a square by 2 this d s. So, this will be 1 plus x minus x plus x cube by factorial 3. So, this is equal to 1 plus x cube by factorial 3. So, in this case in the nth term y n x you will be having an additional term 1 plus minus 1 whole to the power n plus 1 x to the power n plus 1 by factorial n plus 1. Of course, for any real x this term will goes to 0 and ultimately you will be having limit n tends to infinity y n x this is equal to 1 which is the same solution as we have obtained by assuming y 0 x. So, sometimes that clever choice for y 0 x gives a little bit easier way to get the solution, but of course, you do not need to bother about whether we will be choosing f x or 1 plus x. Ultimately, whatever may be your choice, if f x is continuous and k x comma s and its partial derivative both of them are continuous over the uh, um, interval a comma b and the square of length b minus a that is a comma b cross a cross b a comma b, then you will be having this iterates converges to a continuous function and those converges is the uniform convergence and ultimately you will be having the solution. So, today I can stop at this point in the next lectures we will be looking at some other different methods to solve this kind of Volterra integral equation and after discussing all those techniques for solving Volterra integral equation we will be making a comparative study of the method, what are the advantages for uh, using different types of methods or what are the uh, in between uh, mathematical techniques involved with the problem which will may guide us what method will give us the right solution very quickly. So, that means efficiency of the method is very much important. Mm -hmm.